praise God. So uh, welcome back to the second segment of uh, our conversation this early morning. It's 12.30 a.m. Amen. So the kiddos are sleeping and my angelic wife is doing justice to whatever she's doing at this time. And uh, it's a good time I like to you know, marinate on the word of God and share with my brethren. Amen. I always tell people, try to wake up, stay up at midnight to pray. Because a lot of things happen at, at midnight in the realm of the spirit. For those of you that are in the medical field, you will agree with me that people die mostly at midnight. That's when the spirit of death moves around. People died from midnight to a.m. all those stuff. So it's when to wake up and do some covering over your family. So I want to encourage you, set up your alarm to wake you up at midnight. Midnight, 1 a.m., just to pray. Just to pray. Even if it's for 10 seconds, just declare a word and go back to sleep. You don't even need to shout. Just to, can just wake up and say, thank you, Jesus. Take control. I love you, Jesus. That's all. Possession is my confession. Amen. I just love Jesus. I just felt the need to share this with you. So let's continue with our conversation about fake Jesus. <clears throat> Even Jesus said in the last days, many, you know, for you to be careful because many will come in his name to deceive the elect. So it's, it's pertinent that you know not everyone that comes to you in the name of Jesus is with Jesus. But I want you to know that everybody is of God. Everybody. Witches, sorcerers, they are all of God because it's God that made everyone. But not everyone is with God. So we were talking about what the Lord, you know, um, revealed to me, I believe in 2013 or 14, you know, and I shared it with brethren in Uganda when I visited in 2019 first time I visited and as those things begin to unfold now I'm scared I'm scared because I was privileged to see it before now you know most of the people great televangelists preachers healers that heals and prophesy in the name of Christ are not with Christ I'm not mentioning any name because I'm not judging any of them. <clears throat> but I judge people based on the word of God. And this, I'm saying, based on the revelation I received. That the mention Jesus should not make you to relax and think these men are of God. I always say this. Paul, I love Paul. I love Paul the Apostle. And Paul told the Thessalonians in Acts 17.11. He said, listen, I love burying brethren. Because whenever I go to Berins and I preach the gospel to them, the Berins don't just, they, they don't just take my word for it. You know, they will go home and search the scriptures to ascertain if Paul was speaking the truth, if Paul was preaching the gospel to them. But when Paul preaches to the Thessalonians, they will go home and say, oh, Papa has spoken. They wouldn't search. So Paul said he loved the Berins for that. So I just want you to know, when we marinate on the word of God. We are not judging anyone, but we are having a family meeting, discussing things and how to better the family. That's what we are doing. So Paul, in Acts 16, saw this woman, a prophetess, with a gift of healing, prophecy, solving people's problem. And this woman tried to identify with Paul by calling Paul's name and saying, Paul is of God, Paul is a man of God. Paul did not rebuke her the first day she did this. The Bible says she did it for several days until Paul was able to apply sensitivity of the Holy Spirit, understanding that this is not of God. And Paul rebuked the woman and delivered the woman. Now, when Paul delivered the woman, the owners of the woman became angry. And the Lord told me in that revelation, this prophets you see they have owners they are working they are operating under the spirit of mammon mammon is the god of wealth god of money so these men are serving mammon 
in the secret, but in the open, they operate as children of Jesus. So the Jesus, they speak, they heal, in the name of Jesus, they do all, all these things, and mammon gods. Remember, God did not take power away from the devil. He only took away authority. And that authority is what you have as a child of God. So devil can only manipulate you through false prophets when you subject your authority to them. So false prophets are not those that give false messages. No, they give you accurate prophecies. In Africa, I'm from Nigeria to be precise, and from Igbo, there's what we call native doctors. These are native witches. They serve um, um, the gods of the land. These men, they give prophecies, but they are not called prophets. They are called native doctors, right? But they tell you mysteries from the gods. The gods tell them things, good and bad. They reveal to you. That does not make them um, prophets. Imagine if these men decide to wear suits and carry the Bible. Nothing distinguishes them from these pastors, you see. That's what that woman was doing. So when you see a pastor profiting, a prophet, making profits from what he does, that is mammon. No two ways about it. Go in the scriptures. Elisha made no money. No prophets in the Bible made money. None. Not even the apostles made money. None profited. The money, they didn't make money to buy um, private jets. I'm not condemning anyone for buying private jets. Don't get me wrong. You know, <clears throat> they didn't make money to buy Rolls Royce. They didn't make money to buy designer clothes. I am not condemning anyone for doing all those things. But I just want you to understand. When you are making money from people, your congregants, exploiting them to buy all those things that's when i have a problem with you but when you work hard you do businesses and you want to live a luxury life is a good thing all work and no play makes you a dull person right so you got to work and play but do not work uh, play at detriment of others so i just want you to understand there is a fake jesus so when somebody says, in the name of Jesus, don't be too excited. Let me give you an example and I end this message. There's this pastor, a prophet, a young prophet based in America here. He's from Africa. So the first time I saw him on YouTube, I was so happy. I love this guy. Because I called my wife. I said, I love this guy. I love his swag. He's a young dude. And the way he, you know, he carries his shoulder speaking about God. I loved him. So I kept listening to him, how he prophesied, you know. I mean, I just love young people. And I fell in love with how the guy was doing. Until one day, he did something that was a red flag. And my wife immediately fell in love with him because of the husband validating him. But the day I saw the red flag, he called people that came out. They, he said, God told him 10 people will come out. Uh, ten people, ten ladies in need of husbands should come out, and they will give one thousand five hundred dollars. I say, excuse me, which God, which Jesus? That was a red flag, and since then, I turned him down, and I no longer, you know, listen to him. You can see, exactly the way Paul did. Paul was listening. I was listening at this guy. He had dreadlocks. He's a good-looking dude. He dresses fine. He preaches. But that day, he said, God said, you will sow a seed of 1,500 to locate your husband. That was a red flag. Because you can't quantify such message from the scriptures. So please, brethren, be careful. Even though he gives accurate prophecy, even though she gives accurate prophecy, even though he prays fervently and healing happens, that doesn't make him a... Um, a man of God. Jesus says on the last day, people will say, didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I prophesy or heal the sick? And I'll say, depart away from me. You work us of iniquity. You work us of lawlessness. Iniquity is the fact that they knew they weren't serving the man Jesus, but they deceived the people. That's why it is called iniquity. God bless you. I love you. Good night or good morning. Amen.